everybody came to do it, not us. Yeah. What's up? What did I steal your chair? Let's go! Let's go, let's go, baby. Outside the box. Outside the box. I'm getting it tomorrow, Bezrat Hashem. I'll see you tomorrow, 7.30. You know what 7.30 is. Rebs. Rebs. You're living under a rock. You're living under a rock. It's unbelievable. All right, we won't reveal the secrets on air to our one follower. <laughs> we won't reveal it. Oh, Hanan. Hanan is a schut. Chavra mit Hanan. Okay, let's get right into it. At Fila Bashim Koyasar for Pesach Ruben Ben Nasava Sara Bakabas Yehudis, Yonabas Basa, Shir Bas Basa, Sana Ruben Bani, Tuba Bas Peral, Rivka Bas Razel. Um, Shaul ben Chanaleya, Svi ben Chanaleya, Lui Nishma Yudi Baruch Abbas Nechem Emer, and Hashemah have an Aliyah. So here we go. Tzfila 139, our Tzfila. Let's do it. Somech Hashem Echoa, Noflim Vezukhev Echoa, Kifufim, says Rav Nachman. Um... Yeah. I don't think it's uh Rabino, I think it's um you have to fix in your settings. Okay. It, it w- one time just a Misa, just a Misa was on Zoom. Um just a Zoom Misa. Actually, we'll we'll do it after the Fila. Let's go, let's go to Fila. Hashem supports all who fall and shredens all who are bent over. Have pity, mercy, and compassion on us and on all the souls of your nation, the house of Israel, wherever they may be. Reveal to them and to us the true tzaddikim in this generation. Whoever has the power to rectify the souls of Israel, truly bring these souls back to you into your Torah. Help all of us, the house of Israel, truly come close to them. All right, so we're already dressed up for Purim. So just a Zoom mice up before we start. Um... Whatever you want your Zoom to be, like Kira, you see, we have to control in our settings according to the updates of our Zooms. You know, the update bit we had like three years ago. So remember the update bit, the Zoom update? Khanan was there. Khanan was there. <laughs> Unbelievable. Khanan and, and Kira meet each other. So the, the Zoom the Zoom story goes like this. First year IDC. On Zoom, long day. Everything is COVID. We're in. We are in our apartments. Can't move. And I'm going to make something in the kitchen for dinner. And my my Zoom is unmuted, and my camera's on. <laughs> and uh, made a comment about the the class, and uh, how exciting it was. Perm with a focal, and um, I hear some chuckles coming from the computer. I'm like, no, no way is that happening right now. So I go to the uh, computer. My mic is unmuted. My camera is on. And the teacher, my heart, I I felt like it was out of my body. I felt like I was going to collapse. The teacher wasn't there. But what happened? The whole class, I was freaking out. My whole, like 100 people were cracking up. So I stayed after class. Stay till the last bit. And I told my teacher, because it records the class. So he may have rewatched it to Chazara, because we all know he's doing Chazara 40 times or 101 times. We all know. He has to learn the Gemaras. So uh, maybe he saw my comment. I don't know. So I, I had to tell him, got really awkward for no reason. But Baruch Hashem, it felt good. And I uh, did really well in this class. <laughs> Wow. All right. What is Zoom Misa? Now we go in Halacha Lamaisa because we're all wondering. Here is dressing up for perm. We got to know the Halacha. So here we go. It is the choicest way to perform the mitzvah to hear the Megillah reading in the synagogue. 
in a place where there are many people, because as the verse states in Mishlei, in a multitude of people is the glory of the king performing mitzvah with the participation of many people, brings greater glory to Hashem. If this is not possible, one should at least see to it, um, that he should hear it with a minion of ten men. If it is not possible to read with a minion, every individual should read it from the valid Megillah scroll with the preceding blessings. Um, we see seen uh, the 11th Seif. We'll read it in a couple of days. Bezrat Hashem. If one person knows how to read it and the others do not, the one who knows should read it and the others should listen to fulfill the mitzvah. Even though they are not a group of 10, however, the blessings after the Megillah, see below in Seif 11, which we'll get to in a couple of days, is recited only when 10 people are present. Nevertheless, without mentioning the name of Hashem or sovereignty, even an individual may recite the blessing. Halach HaLamaysa. Chavra, Bezrat Hashem, we shall go to our synagogues. We got the the one in, um don't know what it's called, in the New York area. We got the TVA, we got Gissin, the whole thing. So Chavra still haven't printed out the packet that we're going over right now. But this is a Gishmak Gishmak teaching from Rav Itchemeyer. And uh, let's go right into it. Are we ready? Because I'm getting the packet right now. Covet. Coven. Kira, you're you're muted. Okay. All right. Let's go. The source of inner joy. The source of inner joy. Recognizing the Yichud of Hashem. Last time we spoke about how on Purim, the light that shines down onto us is a light where it's so obvious to us that everything is one. The light of Hashem, Hashem rules the world. And we quoted the halacha that said in the Yerushalmi that we bless Hashem for the bad like we bless Hashem for the good. It will be so obvious to us that everything that we experience in this world, everything that we see, everything is in motion, just revealing the oneness of Hashem. Even within the concealments, we could find Hashem. On Purim, there are no concealments. When a person understands clearly in his mind and clearly recognizes with all of his heart that only Hashem does anything and nothing escapes his control because Hashem is re- reality of everything and there is none other besides him. So, however, when we recognize this on Purim, this is not something like Rav Yair, uh, can't quote Rav Yair, but you got to say Rav Yair. You would always say to the Talmidim that we can't view Yeshiva <clears throat> as a memory. Rather, we view it as a lifestyle and we live the lifestyle, right? We're Shana forever. We're shining forever over here. We're shining forever in Kolel. We're shining forever in, in, in uh, Worst Wilds. We're, we're shining forever in, in Herzliya. We're mamish living. So when we go and experience Purim, and we experience the inner joy, we see the Ein Omevado, we experience the light. Everything is so obvious to us. It can't be a memory. It can't be, oh, how good was last Purim? How good was two Purims ago? We can talk about it. It's normal to talk about past experiences. But the light that's being available to us during this time, it should last with us forever. So um, let's keep going. And when a person contemplates, feels, and lives this truth, he rejoices with inner joy. For he knows that everything is only from him. So automatically, everything that is happening to him and everything that happened to him in the past and everything that will happen to him in the future is the very best it can be. So it says like this in the footnote. This is a really, really good footnote. And let's just go into it. When a person merits to feel this knowledge, he will always be happy because it is awareness that solves all problems and brings one to the perfection of his soul. Right? Da'at. Right? Consciousness. Expanded consciousness, like Reb Gidal loves to say. Um, (laughs) You like the shout out. When a person understands that only Hashem is doing everything, unlike how it seems that so-and-so caused him grief, it becomes easy for him to be happy with everything, for he knows that only Hashem did this, and that everything which Hashem does is only for the good. He also doesn't worry about the future. Right? This is Mamish, the deepest, deepest lie of all. Right? Did someone ever make a comment to, to you or to us that Mamish like stung? And Mamish sat there, you know... Uh, Oh, you're not smart. It stings you. It stings you. But when we know that that person is not random, the common is not random, everything is happening for the very good, 
we're able to respond in the way that, you know, we should be responding with gratitude and understand the premise of what's really going on. How is Hashem there? Hashem, reveal, reveal yourself there. How do I know? All right, so here we go. Says here, we're going to transition to a piece from Rav Shlomo, and then we'll, we'll open it up. Because we're talking about this inner joy that we experience on Purim. But the question that we're all asking, and the question that Rav Ichimar even asked in, his, uh, in, in the first chilek, in the second chilek, we could be by the Suda. We could have our wine in hand. It's going to be geschmack. We're going to be with our friends. We're going to be with our family. The music's going to be pumping. We're going to be wearing the mask and we'll be seeing each other. We'll be seeing ourselves. Mamish, we're so deep. We're so deep. Everything I see, it, all external, the costumes, everything, I don't know anything about the inside of the inside. But I'm willing to go beyond. Everything is available to us. And then we ask this question. We ask this question. What's this big uh, simcha all about? Right? The Hebra talk about feeling this inner joy on Purim. Why am I not experiencing it? Or maybe I am experiencing it, but is this the highest level I could be experiencing it? It's going to be a crazy moment. We're going to be sitting there at the Suda. One might not even have this thought. But Gavad, we're preparing. So, so we know this light is being shown onto us during this day. But is there a deeper light available? That's the question that we're asking ourselves. With our wand in hand, we're all happy, right? Is there a deeper light available? So says Rav Shlomo, <laughs> Debra, open up our hearts. It is one thing to be good. It is one thing to be good. And another thing to have a taste of goodness. A taste of goodness. It's one thing to be happy. And another thing to taste joy. A lot of people don't mind dancing a little bit, hopping around a little, but do you taste your own joy? Are we tasting in Chabra? Have you ever been at someone's wedding? There's a little bit of happiness, but do you know where the happiness is? On their nose, on their head, on their ears, but their tongue is still bitter. What's going on here? So it says like this, Rosh Shlomo, this is very beautiful. Very beautiful. He says, when people get married, they drink wine under the chuppah, the wedding canopy. And do you know what this means? It's not enough just to be married, but do you taste marriage? It's not enough to love each other, but do you taste it on your tongue? Do you taste it? This is not random, the taste. It's not a cute idea. Says Mesechetani 22, um, 22a. That Eliyahu Navi came to Rabbi Baroka, and he said like this, these two are destined to the world to come. And said to these two people, what do you do? And they said to him, we are comedians. And we go to cheer the, up those who are depressed. Additionally, whenever we see two people involved in a quarrel, we strive hard to make peace between them. So, Chavar Bezrat Hashem, this is out of this world, this taste of uh, taste of joy, the inner joy that we experience, Bezrat Hashem on Purim and, and throughout the whole year. But are we willing to share it to someone else? Givat, maybe Bizocha, to receive, to be open to receive other people's joy, but also to give our inner joy to someone else. Questions, comments, please feel free. What a strong piece. Bezrat Hashem, Chavra. Oh, what a, gotta love, gotta love the, the side chats. Bezrat Hashem, Chavra, we shall all be healthy, happy, and successful. Thank you to the Sadiqim. Thank you to Gedalia, Gedalia Fencer, and BRI, Kana and Dani, the whole thing. The Sadiqim that are giving us the opportunity to uh to connect to perm connect to ourselves in a deeper way to Am Yisrael and be well fired up